What's good, YouTube, man? It's your boy, T2E Noxie, but shh. Don't tell nobody. Look, check this out. As you guys can see by the title of the video and thumbnail, yes, we are back on Dr. Insanity. But the title of the video that we are reacting to from Dr. Insanity is talking about a mass killer doesn't realize he's being recorded. So as that being said, we're going to see what Dr. Insanity got for us this morning. I'm going to need y'all go ahead and like and subscribe and turn my post notifications. But listen, we're going to say our blessings. I'm going to need y'all go ahead and bow your heads. Follow along. I really appreciate if you guys do so. Without further ado, let's go ahead and get started with this prayer. Thank you, God, for this wood. Bless it. And prayer fires. In Jesus' name we pray. We smoke. Mm, mm, mm. Let's go ahead and get started with this video chat. Hey, we going crazy. We about to hit 800 subscribers already, bro. Who the fuck y'all think y'all is, bro? This video contains. Uh, damn, can I read it? <laughs> I'm gonna be mad, honest, bro. I'm gonna be mad honest, chat. I'm not about to pause this video like that. I'm not even gonna lie to y'all. But the fact that I just seen this part, we already react to this video, but it was like a little clip that we seen from one of the reaction videos that I reacted to. But today, they giving us the full video of what really happened. Oh my God, buckle up. Let's get it, chat. Come on. This man just committed as murder and mercilessly ran over 50 innocent people in a single horrifying rampage. Right, and that's all we knew. We ain't no know nothing else. No, 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 no. The race was on to catch the mass killer who committed this horrifying act, but he managed to flee on foot into a neighborhood. Wow. Little did he know, his every movement was being recorded, and what would follow is the largest manhunt this town has ever seen. Wow. Hands up! Put your hands where I can see them! Put your hands! We on the ad already? Damn. But no, cap chat, like I ain't gonna lie. This is really insane. The fact that I already reacted to this, but it was like a little clip. They ain't even show us that part when they told him to put his hands up. We gotta see what happens. Dr. Insanity, let's get it. Daryl Brooks had been on the wrong side of the law since he was just 17 years old. Right. He was clearly a troubled and disturbed individual, racking up charges of domestic abuse, reckless endangerment, and was even registered as a sex offender. But all of this seemed to culminate in 2021. On the okay. grand return of the Waukesha Christmas Parade following the pandemic, Daryl Brooks decided to ruin the lives of countless people as he took his anger out on the Christmas Parade in a blind moment of rage. Oh, From the oh, hour oh. of 4 p.m., neighbors reported a violent argument coming from Daryl's house. Right. He and his girlfriend weren't on the best of terms and would occasionally explode into fiery rows such as this one. Right. Often it'd be about their troubled relationship. And this one ended in physical violence toward his girlfriend and one of the most violent and senseless acts Wisconsin has ever seen. 30 minutes after the argument, Daryl exited his house and sped across the familiar roads towards the center of Waukesha. And right. at 4.39, he reached the main street before plowing through the barricade to the Christmas parade at 40 miles per hour. Crazy. Five seconds in, he claimed his first four victims, several members of the Dancing Grannies performance group. As he continued, he pressed on the accelerator, swerving to hit as many people as possible, killing an eight-year-old a few seconds later. This is when police and bystanders began to react, trying to clear the roads, warn others of the attack, and attempt to stop Daryl from driving. Right. Thankfully, this worked to some extent, and only one more person was killed. 10 seconds later. After a total of 30 seconds of the murder spree, Daryl sped out of the parade route, leaving 62 people injured behind right. him. Once he was out of the other side of the parade, Daryl fled roughly half a mile from the parade before abandoning his SUV near a house on Elizabeth Street about six minutes later. Right. From there, he fled on foot. He even tried knocking on someone's door and claiming he was homeless, asking them to call an Uber for him. He was given a jacket and a sandwich before fleeing when he noticed police searching the area. Wow! Not long after, he was captured by a security camera, which helped the cops approximate his route and track him down. Yeah, it's hard to see, lie. but on, if you on. look closely... I'm gonna pause it right there, and that's the last time I'm pausing it, you know what I'm saying? But let me just say this. The fact that he acted like that he was a bum, a homeless person, and he knocked on somebody's door and asked for an Uber, 
and they really helped this man out, W man to the motherfucking neighbors that he went to. I ain't even gonna lie, bro. Look closely at the top of this road. You can spot Daryl trying to inconspicuously navigate his way around Waukesha to escape the police. Right. But given the scale of this event, the cops were dedicating all their resources to finding him. Cops set up a perimeter around where his SUV was found abandoned. Mm -hmm. Nobody was allowed in or out, meaning that if Daryl was here, they'd find him soon. Eventually, a resident spotted him hiding out in the woods, and the cops were able to narrow their search efforts considerably. After six hours into the manhunt, the cops located him at a house in a residential area and moved in to apprehend him. This is the body cam footage of that intense arrest. Right. And we saw, we didn't see this part, we saw the part from the door. Like it came from the door. Like a ring to light right there. That's what we saw. And that was it. With Daryl in custody, the officers were able to begin questioning him, but quickly they were forced to stop due to the fact the FBI wanted to take over this case. I've asked a former detective to analyze this interview, and he was able to give a deep dive into every influential moment. Prior to the investigation, the detectives involved already knew just about everything. Right. They knew he was driving, that he didn't own the car, and that he had found the car key inside his pocket. What makes this interrogation so interesting, though, is that Daryl doesn't even know what he's being brought in for. Police never told him he was suspected of the parade killings. From the cop's perspective, this almost five-hour-long interrogation wasn't really to figure out if he did it, more so to see how Brooks would react. Right. They wanted to see how much he'd lie, and if he'd felt any remorse for what he'd done. So they were just playing with this nigga the whole time. Oh, you can, you can drop your hands. No, I think it's for sure. Holy shit. How long have you been out of work? Um, let's see, when did I get locked up? A few months. Anything to do with the pandemic? That's been hitting yeah, you hard. Yeah, that's, that's the reason why. Yeah, yeah, I bet. It made me smooth off. <laughs> I got stuff lined up, though, so. Yeah, when, like, so, well, like what? I'm probably going to go back. I was working at a sheet metal place, mm -hmm. so I'm probably going to go back there. And do you stay at your, is it, is it your mom? You talked about your mom. Is it her address you stay at now? It's, she owns the house. She owns she the house. She owns the house. She doesn't stay there anymore, but she owns the house. Okay. She, she has her own house. She yeah, I think at. we put your mom as emergency. The detectives have already found the first indication that Brooks is willing to lie. Right. If you haven't noticed, the extreme shoulder pain Brooks complained about earlier has miraculously vanished just a few minutes into the interview. He was able to move his arm effortlessly as if the pain never existed, what? something that would later be used as evidence in court. And his tendency to lie will become even more obvious as the detectives continue to divert his attention. Right. You left Stephanie's. It was still daytime. It was still daytime? Yes. Okay. Were there still a lot of people out? It was still, it was still people out. Okay. It was still people out. Um, not a lot in that area, but it was a lot of people out. And it was, pe like I said, it was people, it was older couples walking down the street. It was younger people walking down the street. People were like an event or something was going on? I, I don't know, but it kind of seemed like it was a lot, like it was something going on to where it was vibrant. How long was it be between leaving Stephanie's and those cops yelling at you at the door of that guy's house. Was it dark when they yelled at you? Yeah, by the time they came, it was dark. Okay. But we had been sitting out there. We had been sitting out there for a minute, me, me and the guy. To find how long? Uh, Estimate. 20, 30 minutes, maybe. We were sitting yeah, right down. there, just like this, just sitting on the porch. Well, I called call me an Uber. I called the Uber. I said, look, man, I, I let him know. I said, look, I ain't trying to rob you or nothing like that. Because when I knocked on the door, he kind of was like, whoa. I'm like, look. 
I don't got no weapons. I'm not trying to break in your house. I'm not trying to rob you. Daryl has clearly thought a lot about this alibi since he's managing to deliver a lot of very specific details. Yeah. However, the officers already have mountains of evidence against Daryl and don't believe a word he's saying. As the interrogation continues, Daryl continues to lie until the cops have had enough. Right. Let me ask you this, Daryl. So you weren't out, you weren't out in Waukesha Saturday, just Sunday. Yes, I am. You're a part in the investigation. There's a lot of parts, right? Any investigation, there's investigation we talk right. Well, this domestic abuse thing I'm telling you about, okay. right? You talked about being a, you know, a religious man. I can do better. God. I can definitely do better. We all could. I'm not. We all could. That's I'm why. Perfect. That's why. See, yesterday was a mistake. I should have just freaking watched the game and just yeah. fucking went home. And that's the thing. What is? What do they teach us in Christianity throughout that they teach us that we're broken, right? We're sinners. You're a father. You got three children. 18. 18, 14, and 7. Yes, sir. All right, you got a mama that raised you well, and a God you, you believe in. Absolutely. All right, and all of them are, here's the thing the law want, is to tell, you're telling the absolute whole sure. truth and nothing but the truth, right? Right. Absolutely. I just have concerns if I fact check that Darrell's not telling me the truth. You don't have a car, so Marcus had to bring you out. You don't own a car, your mom doesn't own a car, right? So why did we find you with a car key in your pocket? It wasn't in my pocket. I don't even know where they said that was laying on the ground. The car key in Daryl's pocket is a key part of this case as it shows that Daryl does in fact drive despite his statement to the officers. Knowing that he's quickly being backed into a corner, Daryl tries even harder to convince the officers of his innocence. But these officers had done their research and were about to take a different angle that would hopefully guilt him into confession. It's yours. It's your car key. I'm trying to be as open and honest with you as I can be. And I'm not calling you a terrible man. I'm not saying you were out yesterday hunting and just let me finish. But you did not walk to that house. You did not walk to that house. You did not come here in a tan can. You got a key in your pocket for a car, your mom's name, for the love of God, Marcus. For yourself, for your family, you know what happened yesterday for the people. Tell me what happened. Well, what? With the car. What am I being with your mom's for? car? You're driving goofy, people call you in. You drove out of there in your mom's car, the red car. You're driving a little silly, probably because you're pissed. You met up with Erica in the car at the park. She got in, you talked, and what you're telling me seems pretty consistent that there was nothing physical. I didn't put my hands on her. Nothing. But you met her in the car. Tim, what's going on, man? Asking you a question. Just be, you were out there Just driving kind of crazy. crazy. On, Some man. people said you were driving kind of crazy. Daryl is heavily on the back foot now and has very little room to wiggle out of this one. Right. Eventually, the pressure from the detectives would cause him to cave and admit that he was driving at the time. Right. Now choosing to change tactics and try to garner sympathy from the detectives, deflecting blame onto his girlfriend and an apparent alcohol problem. Erica, she's a sweetheart until she gets that alcohol. That alcohol's the problem. Then you are a type of jazz is and I, I have somebody touch you and uh, I, I'm gonna keep my daughter away from you. Yeah. And even my mom doesn't even like her around when yeah. she's drinking. I've never been with anyone that is as bad as what you're saying right there, but I think he can attest to it. We've all, we've all. Man, <laughs> probably look like he did do it with some chicks, man. I'm you know. So, Darrell, what were you thinking when you went driving, driving through this parade? What am I facing? I don't have you no problem talking with you guys. You got, people, you got people injured that had to go to the hospital. Right. So they're saying I I injured somebody, or you're saying I you injured did. somebody. So I'm looking at what, hurt. reckless endangerment? The very least, yeah. The very least. People got hurt, that's reckless endangerment. I don't know exactly what they're gonna classify it. Yeah, people had legs broken. Endangerment's where you may have hurt somebody by your actions. You did hurt somebody by your actions. Yeah. You wanted information from us, we're sure. I want you to watch and see what's in it. Yeah, it's a good point, it's information sharing. Why do you want me to see that car? Why? Because I think it's important. Why is it important? Is it to make, like, what is it? Why do you want to look? Everybody, everybody knows what was going on. There's that children right there. See those kids, see that little kid right there? You gonna look at it? You don't wanna look at it. You hurt? Yeah. You hurt? Yeah. Emotionally? Don't. Don't do that? Don't do that? Don't do that? 
The most shocking part about this interview is this moment, when Daryl discovered what had actually happened to the victims. Daryl didn't once ask about the victims or if anyone had lost their lives, right. very likely because he had no remorse to give and was concerned only for himself. <laughs> yeah. At this point, the detectives have successfully achieved the main objectives of the interview, to get Daryl to admit he was driving the car and to see if he had any remorse. The interrogation was exceptionally long to corroborate the strong evidence they already had and to acquire footage that would persuade a jury that Daryl had no remorse, which is why they let him lie and portray himself as a selfish, evil man as much as possible. And in that trial, Daryl would continue to paint himself in that exact light as he decided to represent himself. Mm -hmm. This would result in one of the most ridiculous and infamous court cases ever on the internet, with Daryl screaming, shouting, and even threatening his way through the trial, constantly making legal mistake after legal mistake, ruining his chances of getting away with a low sentence. So to start with, Detective Jay Carpenter comes to the stand and has a lot of information to share about their little chat in the interrogation room. Before we even get started, let me go ahead and say what I gotta say. I feel like what's the point of an interrogation room? Like even though he lies and if that person do lie and say, oh, like if I ask that person a question, was you here at 4 p.m.? And they'd be like, no, but I got a whole video of you being there at 4 p.m. You know what I'm saying? And then y'all keep going like, are you sure? Uh, are you sure? Because it seems like to me that I feel like you lying. Like, why are you going through all that? If you know you got so much evidence, just take that person to jail. Like, for real. Like, I, I ain't never get that. And I never will get it. Y'all let me know down in the comment section what y'all think about that. You feel me? You interviewed <clears throat> the defendant, Daryl Brooks, um, on November 21st, 2021, <clears throat> at approximately 11 o'clock p.m. Do you recall that? Objection. Being caught that name. For the record. Objection is overruled. Yes, I do recall that. Not relevant. Yeah, it is relevant. What observations did you make during this clip about the use of his right arm? Both his arms would come out like this and move to me what a person would do when they're normally conversing. It would seem unusual to make those movements if he was in fact in as much pain as he was claiming to us he was in. Last right. night, we asked for um, State's Exhibit 81 to be admitted to evidence, which is the defendant's statement provided to Detective Carpenter and Detective Stern on November 21st of last year. Objection, I didn't provide any statement on the 21st. Jury will disregard the statement by Mr. Brooks. He is not testifying, therefore his statements are not evidence. My objection should be noted for the record. You may be hearing that Daryl repeatedly keeps calling objections. His legal experience is clearly based entirely on movies and TV. Right. And unfortunately for him, in order for an objection to be sustained by a judge, the objection needs to have a legitimate reason. Right. Daryl is unable to object for a legitimate reason, and as such, almost all of his objections are overruled by the judge, mm -hmm. meaning the prosecution is able to continue. I believe that these photographs are designed to make a suggestion to the jury that Erica Patterson is a bad mom. I think that that's what the defendant is trying to do. If we go down that road, we would be forced to counter that claim by pointing out that not only does the defendant not live with the child in question, he doesn't live with any of the other children that he has. Right. He impregnated Erica Patterson when she was a minor in Nevada, and for doing so, he was convicted of statutory sexual seduction, pled guilty in March of 2007 to that felony offense, and is a sex offender on the registry as a result. So if there's any causation that would lead to Erica Patterson being a bad mom, Mr. Brooks has a direct role in that causation. Right. And furthermore, I'll check to that I'm not because sure. that's a lie. Let him at finish. The end of the day, let him we, finish. We gonna open the Mr. door on that. No, since he want to make a record and not be accurate, so let's be ac accurate all on the record. Since you think you know so much, once so again, we can Mr. Open Brooks the door is being on, loud, we can open the door on how old she told me she was interrupting. We, we can ask he's, that question. He is too. over the top animated right now. Mr. Brooks, I'm ordering you to sit down and to let the state no, finish. Listen, no, I'm not going to sit here and let somebody be inaccurate on the record and lie on the record. Right. This is how a huge amount of this trial played out. The prosecution would make a point, and Daryl would get extremely animated and try to deny it with nothing but anger and false truths. Right. In this example, the prosecution mentioned Daryl's sex offender registry, to which he responded by saying that she told him she was 18, as if that excused him of all wrongdoing. But the most shocking and unprecedented moment of the trial was when the judge had to stop all court proceedings, but she felt genuinely scared of him. So as long as the jury's out, we should probably discuss that. Have so that had to be, you that had crazy. to be said. So it's, that, 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 that. That's not how it was said. That, that was how I said. You want to run the record back? 
Mr. Brooks. So I'm the only one. I got one. Mr. I got Brooks. one ear that work, and I heard that. This on, is man. to benefit on, you, so that no, you not. understand Ain't none your of this to witness me, so let's has be clear a prior record. Your Honor, when I leave the table, I'm away from the courtroom, and I have to elevate my voice. So she Alleged has to elevate record her voice of just for that. Stop talking. Okay. Come on, man. Like I don't okay. know who y'all be thinking y'all fooling. I accept the value in terms of value. This uh, document. One more interruption, and you're going to be removed to the next court. That's what you want to do anyway. So, can Your you Honor, tell, I can believe you he has seven prior criminal convictions: an OWI fourth from 2003, <laughs> criminal face. trespass to dwelling from 2006. Right, I need to take a break. This man right now is having a stare down with me. It's very disrespectful. He pounded his fist, frankly. The judge put up with an awful lot in this trial and gave Daryl a huge amount of leeway in order to keep everything as fair as possible. Right. But even with all that in mind, he still managed to completely botch his legal defense even when he was acting calm and polite. Take this for example, where he argued he wasn't being given a fair trial because he wasn't allowed to confront the state of Wisconsin itself. Right, not if I'm not allowed to face my accuser, you're my accuser in this matter would be the state of Wisconsin. With all due respect, your Sixth Amendment rights in that regard have been complied with. Um, I'm requesting uh, a written judicial fact, finding of fact and co conclusion of law on this issue um, for the grounds that I just stated. Um, I'm not being awarded the chance to face my accuser, which I should be awarded that. By technicality, Daryl is correct. The Sixth Amendment does grant him the right to confront the person or persons accusing him of the crime, in this case, that being the state of Wisconsin. But what he's asking is a physical impossibility. The state of Wisconsin is not a person nor a witness. In this case, he is being allowed to confront any witness of the crime that's involved in the trial, so his rights are all being met. He's simply grasping at straws by seeing seemingly trying to challenge the U.S. judicial system as a whole. Right. Daryl's misunderstanding right. of the legal system was made even more clear when it came to his closing arguments. If he had chosen a lawyer to defend him, maybe he could have gotten away with slightly less charges or a lighter sentence, but instead, he gave this travesty of a statement. Good afternoon. It's, it's been a long day. First off, I'd just like to start by uh, letting you guys know that uh, it's a lot of information that you guys should be privy to, I believe. You and you alone have the power. You and you alone decide what is true and what isn't true. You should be informed that you have the power to nullify any law that you don't agree with. Right. Daryl is not entirely correct here. Yes, the jury can nullify laws. However, this is only done when the law that has been broken is extremely strange and the person is 100% guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. Okay. For example, Alaska has a law that states it's illegal to whisper in someone's ear while they're moose hunting. If a case like this found its way to trial, the jury could nullify that law. Daryl Brooks gave his closing statement for 50 minutes without saying very much other than attempts to debunk the evidence and acquit himself of his crimes. However, there was one point that stuck out from his closing statement that shows just how evil he truly is. It's hard to keep everything together emotionally. Um, and honestly, I don't believe that I have any more tears left. Uh, it's, it's been a hard year for the families, mostly. That opens the door to talk about uh, forgiveness for a little bit. With every healing process, there comes a, a forgiving process. It's not an easy thing for anyone. Daryl is trying to deflect the jury onto it being a tough year for victims as well as anyone who was present at the parade. But in reality, it was his crime that made this year the toughest for the victims. Right. The jury deliberated for less than a day, and they came back with a verdict that he was guilty on all 76 counts. Mm -hmm. Daryl was ready to be sentenced, but not before the judge spoke to him directly first. Mm. Frankly, Mr. Brooks, no one is safe from you. This community can only be safe if you are behind bars for the rest of your life. Wow. The community is not safe from your violent and criminal conduct unless you are in custody. You left a path of destruction, chaos, death, injury, confusion, mm -hmm. and panic as right. you drove seven or so blocks through the Christmas parade, never once stopping or seemingly caring about the wake of carnage that you left. Four of those blocks were turned into a scene that frankly is no different than a war zone. This court is imposing a life sentence without the possibility or eligibility for extended supervision. One life sentence 
for Virginia Sorensen. One life sentence for Leanna Owen. One life sentence for Tamara Durand. One life sentence for Jane Kulik. Damn. One life sentence for Bill Hospital. And one life sentence for Jackson Sparks. Daryl Brooks was sentenced to six consecutive life sentences in prison without the possibility of parole, meaning that Daryl Brooks will spend the rest of his life behind bars. Oh my goodness, bro! Oh. <laughs> Yo, bro, that, is, that that's so crazy, chat. Hey, y'all let me know what y'all think about this video. I ain't gonna lie, this shit. I don't know, chat. This video was insanity. <laughs> no cap. Hey, I'm gonna need y'all go ahead and like and subscribe and turn my post notifications. If you wanna be the Noxie family, all you gotta do is put down in the comment section. Hashtag KNOX, YYFAM. I'm gonna like it and let you know that you're in the Noxie family. It's that simple. Make sure to go follow my Instagram as well. <laughs> we'll be linked down in the description. So it's gonna be easy for you guys to follow it so you don't have to follow nobody else and you think that is me. But the whole time it's not Noxie, no bullshit. But I love y'all. Y'all my heart, y'all my soul. A bomb will never fold. It's your boy T2E Noxie, but shh.